Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, as always, and delighted you've been able to tune in with us yet again. Now, before we do get into today's show, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and give us an old share on social media if you do get a chance. If you also like listening to it on a podcast player of your choice, there's a link down below in the description, and we're available on about 20 or so podcast players at this stage, so plenty of places to listen to the show. So now, that that's all done and the homework has been completed we're going to jump into the top five stories doing the rounds in thailand today and the first one is in relation to the prime minister priot's party at risk of dissolution over speech mentioning rama the ninth Prime Minister Priya Chanacha Rum Thai Sang Chart, the United Thai Nation Party, could be in trouble over a speech made by its deputy party leader, Trai Rong Suankari, on Saturday, said a former election commissioner. The election commissioner, who served from 2013 to 2018, said Trai Rong's speech in Nakhon Ratchisama may have broken the EC Section 4 rule against involving royalty in election campaigns. Article 17 of Section 4 bans political parties from linking the monarchy to their campaigns, he pointed out. During his campaign speech in the northeastern province on Saturday, Trirang told Korat locals that King Rama IX once said that Thai should elect good people to government, adding that no one is better than Uncle Tu, Priot's nickname. The UTN deputy chief then followed up by making an embarrassing blunder. Trirang told his audience that if they wanted a good government, in line with the late King Rama IX's words, they should vote for the Tyrak Thai Party, the now defunct party of former Premier Taksin Shinawatra. Realizing his mistake, Trirang uttered a curse, which can be loosely translated as damn I screwed up, as the audience looked on in complete and utter surprise. Some Chai dismissed the verbal blunder but said that the mention of King of the Late King could lead to trouble for UTN. This is not a laughing matter. Trirang may have violated EC regulations, which could lead to UTN's dissolution if someone files a complaint to the commission, he said. Trirang quit the Democratic Party, which he had been deputy leader, to join the UTN in October last year. The UTN is led by another former Democrat MP, Pirapan Salarakata. Prime Minister General Priyat Chanacha was in December appointed UTM's PM candidate for the upcoming general election scheduled for May 7th. And moving along to our next story of the day, senior police officers accused by an activist of managing gambling websites. An activist has made allegations against senior police officers accusing them of controlling gambling websites. Now according to the activists, the police have been using gambling websites to earn large sums of money. They have allegedly been doing so by ensuring that certain websites are allowed to operate while others are shut down. This, in turn, allows the police to control the flow of money from the websites and to take a cut for themselves. The activists also called on the authorities to investigate the matter thoroughly and to take action against those responsible. The allegations came at a time when the Thai government is stepping up efforts to crack down on illegal gambling. The authorities have been particularly focused on online gambling, which they see as a major problem due to its ease of access and the large sums of money involved. Whether the allegations are true or not, they highlight the need for increased transparency and accountability in law enforcement. If the police are indeed involved in illegal activities, it is essential that they are held accountable for their actions. Overall, it is important that the authorities take a firm stance against illegal gambling and they ensure that those responsible for are brought to justice. Only then can the country begin to address the serious issues and protect its citizens from the harms of gambling. So yet and again, a year is getting worse and worse for the Thai police. More senior police officers now tied to gambling syndicates and rings and the control of websites and the flow of money here in Thailand. It's not surprising because I think the Thai police force for a long time has been allowed to continue the way it has with no real intervention from government or anyone else. Now, when the current government came into power through a coup in 2014, the first thing that was out of Priot's mouth was they were going to revamp the Royal Thai Police. They were going to, you know, stamp out corruption. But as far as I can tell, The corruption seems to be systematically getting worse year by year and there is absolutely no improvement in the manner in which they behave. So it begs the question at what point and who is finally going to take on the Thai police force and 
shake them into a proper force where corruption is, you know, at least not, I don't think a corruption will ever be eliminated in any police force because no matter where in the world you go, you'll always find a little, but it needs to be not so much in your face as it is here in Thailand. And personally, the way I see it at this point is, I mean, there's not much left other than to disband the Thai police force and start a new organization because I just think the corruption is so embedded in its philosophy and core that there is no saving it at this point and and no re-evaluation or revamp is really of the police force as it is now is ever going to really cure the corruption issues that they have. But we'll see. We have we're going to have a new government coming in here and I wonder what their whole focus will be on. I think people in Thailand and tourists as well, people who come here wouldn't like to have a a police force that they can go to, that when there's an emergency, they know they can call them and they know that things will be done properly and everything else. And we are going to bring into another story in a few minutes that kind of ties into this whole thing. And, you know, you'll understand when you do hear the story. But nevertheless, I'd love to know your opinion about it. I mean, do you think it's time that the Thai police force is dissolved and that a new organization is built from the ground up? I'd love to know your opinions about it down below in that comment section. Now, moving along to another quite an interesting story. Chinese visitors return propels January foreign tourist arrivals to 2.14 million. Foreign tourist arrivals in Thailand for January 2023 reached 2.14 million, a significant increase from the same period last year, thanks in part to the return of Chinese visitors. Before I read any more, that's thanks in part to the country reopening is what you should be saying there. According to the Tourism Authority of Thailand, the number of Chinese tourists in January 2023 was up by more than 200% compared to January 2022. Again, numbers being used in an article which are just nonsensical. In January last year, Chinese people weren't even allowed to travel outside their country. But anyway, Chinese visitors accounted for the majority of the total number of tourists, followed by tourists from other Asian countries, Europe and the Americas. The Tourism Authority of Thailand attributed the increase in foreign tourist arrivals to several factors, including the easing of COVID-19 restrictions, the resumption of international flights, and the success of the government's Phuket Sandbox program, which allowed vaccinated tourists to visit Phuket without having to quarantine. Despite the positive trend, The Tourism Authority of Thailand cautioned that the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and its related restrictions and regulations could still have an impact on the tourism industry in the coming months. The agency urged tourists to follow health and safety guidelines and be prepared for possible changes in travel requirements. Overall, the increase in foreign tourist arrivals is good news for the tourism industry and the Thai economy as a whole, as tourism is a significant contributor to the country's GDP. However, it remains to be seen how sustainable the recovery will be in the face of ongoing pandemic-related challenges. I think it's quite an interesting article, but some of it is a bit nonsensical. I've noticed the Tourism Authority of Thailand has been enjoying comparing the current figures to last year's figures, which and and 2021 figures which is it's just nonsensical because i mean in 2021 2022 we barely had any international travel here in the country so the idea of saying oh it's up 500 percent since then it's just nonsense people are not that stupid to fall for this kind of this bullshit numbers it's sometimes i feel like they're trying to condone their existence by showing look how well we've done look you've done well because the country has done well because Thailand got rid of its restrictions, reopened the country, you could freely travel in and out, and basically the rest of the world did it at the same time. So that's why people are traveling, that's why the country is full. I I read an interesting article today which basically said that the top source markets in January were as follows. Malaysia had 288,745 visitors and Russia came in second with 202,759 visitors, followed by South Korea with 169,000 tourists. Um, So that's basically the top three nations traveling here to Thailand at the moment. And it's significant when you go to areas like Phuket, for instance, and you do, for some reason, there's more Malaysians traveling to the country, but you don't notice that. But you do notice that there's a significant amount of Russians. And I, I guess it's because possibly the manner in which they behave when they're here, they stand out a lot more than, let's say, Malaysians and Koreans. And that's definitely something we're going to talk about in another show in the not so distant future. Tourism industry is definitely getting better. Things are on the up and up. Of course, the Tourism Authority of Thailand are weary all the time to make bold predictions, or are they? But you never know. COVID is still around. They don't know what's around the next corner. So they also urge some caution, which I I guess is 
okay in many other ways. But nevertheless, moving along, guys. Executive decree on torture and enforced disappearance faces challenge in Parliament. The executive decree on torture and enforced disappearance is facing opposition in Parliament with some lawmakers challenging its provisions. The decree was issued in September 2022, aims to combat torture and enforce disappearance in Thailand. It sets out a framework for investigating and prosecuting cases of torture and enforced disappearance and establishes a committee to oversee the implementation of the decree. However, some lawmakers have raised concerns about the scope of the decree and its potential impact on law enforcement. They argue that the provisions of the decree could be used to target police officers and other officials who are carrying out their duties in good faith. Opponents of the decree are calling for amendments to be made to address these concerns. They are also calling for more transparency and public Public consultation in the process of drafting and implementing laws related to human rights. Proponents of the decree, including human rights activists, argue that it is a necessary step in the fight against torture and enforced disappearance. They point in to the many cases of abuse and violence that have been documented in Thailand and argue that the government must take action to address these issues. The debate over the executive decree on torture and enforced disappearance highlights the ongoing tension in Thailand between human rights and law enforcement. It remains to be seen whether lawmakers will be able to reach a consensus on the issue and move forward with the implementation of the decree. And our final story of the day, and it's a bit of a strange one, and it kind of shows me how out of step possibly the Ministry of Tourism and Sports in this country is, but the minister is planning new law on animal fighting. And it's to attract visitors. Thailand's Ministry of Tourism and Sports has announced plans to introduce a new law aimed at regulating animal fighting with the goal of attracting more tourists to the country. The proposed law would set out clear guidelines for the treatment of animals used in fighting and would require organisers of animal fights to obtain licences and follow strict safety protocols. The minister hopes that the law will help to improve the image of animal fighting in Thailand and make it more appealing to tourists. Animal rights activists has criticised the proposal, arguing that animal fighting is inherently cruel and that it should be banned outright rather than regulated. They point out that many tourists are likely to be put off by the idea of attending animal fights regardless of how well regulated they are. Despite these concerns, the minister remains optimistic about the potential of regulated animal fighting to boost tourism in Thailand. He argues that many tourists are interested in experiencing local customs and traditions, including those related to animal fighting, and that a well-regulated industry could help to meet the demand, while also promoting animal welfare. It remains to be seen whether the proposed law will be successful in achieving these goals or whether it will face opposition from animal rights activists and others who oppose animal fighting on ethical grounds. Sometimes I wonder, do ministers in this country ever look and read anything from outside of Thailand to gauge what tourists do and don't want? I mean, we've come to the point here in Thailand where you cannot ride an elephant as a tourist. And the reasons behind that are obviously clear. The treatment of the elephant, how the elephants are broken and all the other things that go with it. And that was not banned, but regulated because you know why? Tourists refuse to do it anymore. And so these sanctuaries had to change. They weren't sanctuaries then, but they are now. These sanctuaries had to change and become something different to attract tourists and show that they're taking care of the elephants in a better way. And this kind of parallels to all this. The minister somehow thinks that having animals fighting in cages is going to attract tourists from various parts of the world. Now, maybe some countries might find it interesting, but I would say the majority of countries will find it disgusting. And the same backlash against Thailand when they had the whole elephant issue will certainly come when something like this is brought up. I personally believe this will never see the light of day because I'm sure... Well, firstly, we have an election coming up. So this minister will be gone 100% after the election. He won't be kept. He'll be be let go. So he'll be gone and a new person will be in. And I'm sure somebody new coming in will know this is just not the right idea. It's not a way to drum up tourism and they need to come up with something better and less controversial and possibly maybe even ban the fighting of animals altogether, which I think would be a much better way to go and Thailand would you know I think gain the hearts of other nations if they saw them really putting animal welfare to the forefront of policies here in the country and that's my opinion on that and that's it for today folks hope you enjoyed the show if you have any comments on any of the articles or the news stories 
drop it down below in the comment section. I love to read what you write. And you know, I always do read them. Sometimes I don't comment, sometimes I do. It all depends if I have time or not, but I do read everything. And that's it for today. As I said, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your day, stay safe, and we'll talk soon. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.